Hello guys, welcome to Inch Electronics. So in today's episode, let's take a look at yet another power supply, and this time it's not from China, as at least by this label here. This is AP power adapter, 12 volt, 2 amps, made in India. So this thing, I have been using this thing for the last three years on my uh, modem, and today it suddenly stopped working. And let's see what is wrong with that. But before that, let me show you this. I can uh, let me see this. Can you see these two color changes right here? And it feels a little bit like you know, uh, like a dimp or something. So this obviously has to happen with heat. You know, the plastic will actually flex a little bit when it something gets too hot. So if I plug this in right now, let me. Uh, bring my series tester you have seen this video right uh, else I will attach it up here possibly most of the case see this is this always happens sometimes I will uh, bring in some stuff that has already been recorded in previous videos and I will say I will attach a link in the description up in the description below or in the i button up here but uh, you know I'm recording this at today it's a Sunday I'm recording this on a, the date is uh, 13th of May and uh, Sunday it's a Sunday but thing what happens is that I'm recording it today and I will edit this videos maybe a couple of weeks after because of the because of all the things that happens in my regular life I have to forcefully keep this thing away for a few weeks and then I when I upload it I actually forget to actually attach these uh, hyperlinks so yeah things actually happen so if you if if you want to watch something that is not listed up here or in the description you can always check my channel uh, with the name that I'm mentioning for the device in this case it's a series tester and the, now the bulb bypass is off which means it's a direct connection and you don't understand what I'm saying if without watching that video so now the tester itself is on but there is no light turning on and obviously there is no output voltage at all so uh, let's open this thing and see what is inside we have to look at these two things especially and there is no screws that I have noticed so I'm believing this is either glued shut or uh, let's see okay oh it uses the lashing mechanisms oh, there it goes and yes of course you can see am i in frame see those two uh, things right there see those two dimples that actually corresponds to those two locations of that that actually has to ha do something with that capacitor and the second one this one over here has to do something with this power transistor so uh, both of them could be wrong and of course suddenly we can clearly see that there is an issue with this uh, capacitor it's bulged already it's bulged right there and maybe that capacitor is blown or this this transistor itself is also blown uh, let's take a look what exactly is the reason bottom side looks clean there is nothing there is a little bit of flex residue right here so this is the capacitor is bulged and it, the t circuit itself oh no wait 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 it's just now that I'm noticing this see that uh, resistor is that a resistor inductor it's kind of it's a fusible resistor it's the AC is coming straight to that resistor right here see uh, let me focus on that see that resistor right there it's completely blown see see that it's blown on both sides a fusible resistor. so possibly what happened is that this, this thing somehow drawn some extra current and causing the transistor to heat up and the capacitor to bulge and the sudden inrush current actually blown the fuse see that is the use of these resistors well, sometimes I, I have seen people asking why they are using a resistor as a fuse will they actually work as a fuse exactly it will because you can now see a proper example for that let me make it sure let me bring in my multimeter sorry for all the background noise and things because I'm uh, recording this at uh, in the morning usually I record everything at night because of because I want to avoid all these sounds but now it's not possible today and uh, let me short circuit that 
see it's working and nope it's not working it's a fully open fuse right there as a tiny value the SMP circuit itself is really typical it uses the uh, uses the 2N7D which is a family of 1300 uh, transistors I, I shall attach the screenshot with of data sheet in here and the circuit itself is used based on this power transistor right here and it has the uh, proper it's a 2 amp rated uh, power supply and let's take a look at the winding uh, transistor see that it's really thick it is thick uh, copper wire inside it really is thick wires inside so I think it, there is no problem for it to provide uh, 2 amps and the diode they are using is it's a short key rectifier diode so 36 0, 36 0 and yeah that's also a proper rated uh, diode right there and the output filtering capacitors it's a thousand microfarad 16 volts it's made by uh, a Chinese manufacturer and like this one it's a uh, 50 volt for T7 microfarads and uh, in here the input main input filtering capacitor is made by caps on 8.2 400 volts that's the one we have to change of course we need to change the fuse these two has to be the uh, the limiting transistors one has to do with the power sensing and of course see there's there's a there's that that's the uh, primary side sensing and that's the primary side sensing for uh, for overload protection for to stop this thing so it has to attach with this transistor for to stop and the second one the second transistor right here has to do with the optocoupler because uh, the optocoupler has to optocoupler will detect when the op in output voltage crosses a certain uh, the above 12 volts the voltage drop there has to be a voltage divider these uh, resistors has to form a voltage divider to perform uh, yeah these two resistors this one is actually the current limit for this MOSFET uh, LED you can see the LED can uh, this this transistor is connected to this pin right here which is connected to the MOSFET I mean the uh, LED here inside so that's the current limiting right there uh, th this two this uh, 1k and this one uh, one mega ohm resistor those two has to be the power voltage dropper for sensing the 12 volts and uh, you can see there's a, a proper suppression capacitor this transient suppression capacitor right there that without any ratings on that mm, it's a hard time focusing on it let me see there is no I can I cannot see any kind of rating at all on that nope nope there is a rating it's a 2k2 let me adjust the exposure uh, the focus so that see that it's a uh, it's a 2 kV rated capacitor right there see that it's a 2 kV rated capacitor uh, for the uh, for the for the bypassing action and also there is a proper snubber circuit attached this diode that resistor that's a 100 K and this capacitor those two those three will form the snubber network for this uh, transformer right here this switching transformer so it's basically very simple power supply this oh look at that that board was getting a really hot it is toast you see there is a color difference if I adjust the exposure nope you need light you can see the the transistor the pin of the transistor the, that particular area has a color change compared to the rest of the circuit let me see on the bottom side is it visible nope so that is really getting hot of course that's been sick that is uh, uh, justified by this uh, dimple right here so let's look at the isolation we almost forgot that and that is where things gets really bad see on the top this is really good in terms of serviceability because of all the through hole components used and there is no um, intelligence involved so it's pretty simple to repair but the isolation is very poor see this is the primary side winding and of course this this thick track right here has to do with the uh, oh, this diode is in the negative side see I mean uh, 
the diode is usually let me just grab a pen and paper see usually when it comes to uh, transformers like this we usually find the diode attached like this uh, usually the output is attached like this but in this particular case in this transformer this arrangement and it's common it's a common arrangement that to see uh, the, the diodes attached in the in the negative side just like this and yes it do work there is no issue with attaching the diodes in either direction that's 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 just the way of doing it that's that's really popular uh, nowadays but usually people follow the first thing that I've shown yeah. so uh, that's all about it then there is a one megaohm resistor right there for the initial startup and then the uh, remaining power has to be trans uh, get from this uh, auxiliary winding and as, I was, as we were talking about there is no enough separation right here see let me just show you these this this right here this right here is the this right here is the primary side even this terminal right here, this terminal even right here this all these is the uh, see these are this area is the primary side and look at this thing right here this is where they would have used some brain see this resistor that is used as a protection for the current limiting resistor for the LED that is inside this optocoupler and the way they actually used it is take a connection from here and bring it back to here which makes it really close to the primary winding see that's the primary or maybe auxiliary or primary it doesn't matter but it is uh, in near vicinity to the line AC signal right there see it's just a design flow right there there is decent enough separation like a couple of millimeter worth of separation right here even though there is nothing in, in this position where the diode negative goes this is the ground terminal but still this is reference to AC mains there is not enough separation right here but this is what uh, the worst of all things that I have seen they could have used an axial mounting see there is the there is enough space here or they could actually use an axial resistor the one that you see like this like like they could actually mount the resistor like this in the in the circuit board this type like this they, thereby they can actually avoid a track like they can use an axial resistor right here or or you can use that as a, as a, as a link see you get the point right so they can actually provide a decent you know, separation at this time but they are not doing that so by the looks of it this is actually this could have been made in india but more or less the entire uh, components is coming from china so or maybe they are just bringing the whole they are importing the whole thing from china as a separate pieces and they're just assembling in india maybe, maybe that's the case i don't know i don't exactly know but decent enough power supply for and i, I do remember i was i paid around 150 indian rupees for this three years ago because the reason why i'm remembering this is because i bought a couple of these at the same time so uh and the one that i bought along with this is it is in my friend's home at the moment and it is still functioning no problem fine and it is on 24 7 for the last three years it's been turned off only a couple of times during lightning strikes or things like that for uh, during uh, the rest of the whole period in this thing it's it's on 24 7 365 days a day so it is really a good thing you know and now let's try to fix it see if there is if there is fuse is the one that is having some issue and of course we need to change the uh, the uh, the uh, capacitor assuming everything else is fine we could have been uh, it's, it's it will be really easy to easy fix if we can fix it so uh, let me see let me see if I can find a 4.7 capacitor and a fusible resistor in my uh, junk junk box and I will be back